I'm here for what could be a historic day. It's now time for the Salvadoran nation to choose a new president, and it could be the first time they elect someone from the left. The Salvadoran people, uh, I think, are very excited in developing the uh, elections. Um, so far, it's been a relatively peaceful campaign. Arena, the right-wing party, has held power for over 20 years. Their candidate, Rodrigo Advila, was once the police chief. Facing him is Mauricio Funes. His party, the FMLN, converted from armed struggle to peaceful politics in 1992. Still seeking their first presidential win, they were well ahead in the polls, but now it's too close to call. With so much at stake, it's important that many observers are here to make sure that this election is truly democratic. Thanks to the many volunteers that have, of the seas that have helped set up this mission and the 265 observers that have come from 19 countries. The observers have an extremely important role in helping collect data so that the Salvadorans themselves can look at their system and look at ways to reform to strengthen the democratic participation. Oh, yes! Apart from being trained, the observers have to be early. You're right. We're going this way. At this voting center, in the heart of the capital city, I will be keeping a close eye on table 448. There are over 9,500 tables like this all over El Salvador. Each one has four officials, two from each party. Most of them are ready for the start of voting. Nearly 10,000 voters are registered at this centre, 450 at each of the 22 tables. Some have travelled quite a long way. Right now the system in El Salvador is based on your last name, not on where you live. In San Salvador, for instance, uh, where it's the largest population, you have to travel maybe eight kilometres, even though there's a voting centre right on your block. And that creates congestion. It, it also... Uh, helps cover up some of the vices of the system. Here, there's little sign of irregularities, and there are plenty of us keeping an eye out to make sure that it stays that way. The observers have done an excellent job, and I think their presence here has generated a, an environment of um, security and confidence so people don't feel afraid to come out and vote. They've documented incredible details about what's been happening. And we can help to make sure it's a secret ballot, though some want everybody to know how they vote. Uh, the day started out a little bit tense, especially with reports starting last night, Saturday about buses coming in from Guatemala. We had 15 buses in Mexicanos, uh, some in Antiguo Cuscatlan, and some at the military quartel in um, San Jacinto. By the afternoon, there are long lines of voters. Many Salvadorans want to have a say. And as it's still so close, every vote could count. Here in this voting center, there's been about a 70% turnout, turnout, and there's still about 20 minutes left to vote. Um, the day has been peaceful. There hasn't been any uh, violent alterations, so that's very good. Um, so we hope that uh, the vote reflects the will of the Salvadoran people. By the time the polls close, nearly 70% of all registered voters in Salvador exercise their right to vote. <laughs> Then, at the 461 voting centres all around the country, counting begins. 
FMLN. And it's still looking close. Here at this centre, nearly 7,000 votes are being counted. And across El Salvador, no fewer than 2.5 million ballot papers will be counted tonight. Both sides still think they can win. Seis, siete, dieciocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, trece, catorce. Here at table 448, most have gone for the FMLN. By 19 votes, that's just over 53%. This looks good for the FMLN, but when all 22 tables at this centre have finished counting, it's closer, just 52%. And in the San Salvador municipality, when they've counted over 200,000 ballot papers, the gap narrows again. The FMLN still leads, but only just. With these early indications, some start to celebrate, but it's going to be close. With 30% of the count in, the official tally shows the FMLN just ahead, but with barely 51%. When I arrive at the electoral centre, Mauricio Funes is already claiming victory. And the computers there show the FMLN lead still holding up. It's still over 50%, and by now, nearly three quarters of the vote have been counted. So, it's been a fair election. No one has reported any significant violations, not even the head of the electoral tribunal. From what I've seen today, I'm not surprised. By the time I leave the centre, 90% of the vote is in, and the FMLN still have just over 51%. Yes, it's been a historic day. Step forward in the consolidation of a process that began with the signing of the peace accords in Chapultepec on January 16, 1992. The report from the CIS observers confirms that this election has been fair. It's been a close result for the FMLN, but democracy here won decisively. It's the first time a party that's been elected that doesn't represent the interests of a small economic elite in the country in over 500 years. Um, it's really a victory for the Salvadoran people.